Hi guys, so please let me know if you can hear me all right. I'm using this microphone here and I don't know um, if it's working that well. So <laughs> uh, I, it, it works in other things. I don't know if it'll work in this live. So I got some great feedback, some private uh, messages about questions on what I was talking about yesterday. And so I wanted to go a little bit deeper, but also give you a really thorough 30,000 foot view so that you know what I'm talking about as far as how is this applicable, what does this even mean, and um, how can I use it. And that's my puppy right there. She's always loving to visit. So I have my trusty whiteboard here to help me kind of give you a lay of the land. Yes, this is Riley. She's my Irish wolfhound. She's very pretty. <laughs> Anyways. Um, all right. So when I talk about strengthening relationship within um, a business, you could be thinking something very literal like a customer relationship, a, a staff member relationship, a contractor relationship, but also what I am mainly talking about is marriage and business. And so we're going to go into some science about marriage and business, um, but without the business part first, because this will start to permeate every angle and corner of your life that has to do with people. And whether that has to do with business or not right now, let's just look at the science of the relationship aspect. So um, I wanted to talk about some misconceptions of what marriage relationship, uh, any deep long-term relationship misconceptions they we have out here in our society. So one is that um, when things get really rough, you start to think or society starts to think that I just married the wrong person. Like, whoops, bad selection. And the truth is that it isn't really about selection. It's about skills. I mentioned that in the previous video, and it is still true. It is about skills, not selection. Um, a lot of people don't even realize all the, you know, inner workings of your mind when you are dating and selecting. Uh, usually, a uh, little tidbit, we go for the opposite of who we are. And while that's really interesting and fascinating in the beginning, it can be really irksome <laughs> and you get these conflicts. And I'm going to show you why that happens and why it's really uh, cool when you learn the skills to deal with it. The re you probably picked a great person. You just don't know it yet or you don't have the skills to see how you can leverage that to being an excellent relationship. So that's one misconception. Um, it's not enough, by the way, this is another misconception, like I'm, I already have really great people skills. I already have a solid team or uh, I have a great community online. They love me. Having good people skills is not the same as having these particular skills for a long-term relationship. So having good people skills for surface stuff and temporary relationships or relationships that just don't go quite as deep as a marriage, for, for example, um, the skill, those, those kind of skills you came by naturally are not going to be enough to carry you through to a long-term relationship. There is another special set of skills for that. The cool thing is, though, that once you use so once you learn the skills for the long-term relationship, all the other relationships get much easier and you get even more skilled. So that is one thing that really triggered me when I started to learn about this was that it did start to permeate all my other relationships, but I had to work on the long-term one first and get the deep skills for that. It's really exciting. Okay, so that's misconception number two. Um, misconception number three, fighting. Oh, hi, Tina and Larissa. Hi. Can you guys tell me if you can hear me? Okay. Please let me know. I think I'm doing this right. Um, but just let me know if I'm rambling and uh, you can't hear me. All right. Um, misconception number three. Fighting in and of itself is not the problem. So you're fighting a lot. You think, oh, my God, the fighting. Now, that is like looking at um, an illness only as a symptom. And so 
you got a runny nose and you're like, crap, the runny nose is the problem. And so you do things to try to help the runny nose when really you have a virus that your body is fighting. So you have to um, identify the issue correctly. So fighting isn't the problem. It's the quality of fighting. So the other interesting misconception is that if we're, if things are going really well, then fighting should just evaporate. And that's not true. And I'll get to the science of why really soon. Um, so that's misconception number three. Misconception number four is when it gets bad, we can't make it better because we're asking the wrong questions. I guess that's not really a misconception, but it's, it's another bad idea. Like if things are bad, I can solve it because of um, this is our problem and I'll just read a book about it. That might help, but really you're not equipped to ask the right questions on how to solve it because you're not um, – in the beginning, like, like one of my problems was, was, uh, I thought fighting was the problem. Like we're just fighting too much. So then you start making compromises. Well, compromises can be very, very tricky and they can be a booby trap. So most people that freak out and they just explode out of nowhere, you're like, what? It's probably because they had made too many compromises that they were unaware of setting themselves up for an explosion. That's one thing. So uh, that's number four. Number five, dependency isn't the problem. It's the solution. And that blew my mind when I first learned it. So uh, I, was, I was confronted with this because we all want to be independent as a woman too. Like we all want to be independent. And so uh, I, wa I don't want to depend on my spouse like that sounds really tricky like they're gonna get resentful and uh, I'm not gonna grow as a person and that's not what the type of dependency I'm talking about is so there is something called skilled dependency and it's something that if we all learned we'd be better um, we'd be better customers in retail we'd be better uh, people to restaurant uh, waiters I don't know why I could do that word uh, we waiters would be, because, for example, using the waiter, um, we're dependent on them to talk to the rush, uh, to talk to the kitchen and bring us our order. We are dependent. Now, somebody who isn't very skilled at that is going to piss off the waiter, maybe get their <laughs> spit in their food. I don't know. But somebody who's skilled at that is able to trust and communicate properly. And the evening goes well, you get your food, the waiter is happy to serve, and it's all good. Oh, I have my cat too. And my cat wants to be a part of this. This is my kitty. Yeah, he doesn't want to be pick, picked up. His name's Cagney. I don't know why the pets want to be here when I'm working. But anyways, if they get in the way, uh, that's why they're right there. Okay, so let's get into the nuts and bolts of science on what are these weird cycles we keep falling into? What are these broken records? It's actually not psychology-based science. It's anthropology-based science. And it was discovered by uh, and written about by a man named Barry Oshra. And he talks about, I hope these work. Let me just test them here. That one's pretty okay. And purple, let's do purple, great. Okay, so uh, he talks about the natural order of organizational things that um, uh, organic life takes. And this is an order that happens in everything, relationships, uh, biology. So I'll get to that. Um, the first one is individuation. The second one, I have to go to my notes integration and then differentiation don't judge me if I spell things wrong and dedifferentiation I don't know okay so it goes like this boom it's a circle of organization. Uh, and how this works is, um, I'll give you an example, but basically he discovered this, that life takes on this um, organizational cycle. And then psychologists 
started studying it and realizing like, holy smokes, this is how we organize our relationships and this is how we get into issues. So for example, uh, for a, a biological example, you have a sperm and an egg. Okay. And they're individuals. So there's the sperm and the egg and they're different and in integration. They become one and that's conception. Uh-huh. Thanks cat. And then de-differentiation or differentiation would be that one cell goes over here and they start forming an ear and this side over here starts forming a lung. And then in de-differentiation, you could basically slice open that ear, or slice open that lung, take um, a sample, look at the DNA, and the DNA is from them. So that's a biological example of what this cycle is. Now, how about a relationship? So say you have um, this person in purple. This is going to get tricky. And this person in green. They're individuals. Then they become friends and get married. Um, I know I just jumped. No cat. <laughs> I just jumped it pretty quick there and I lost my marker. Anyway, uh, I'll get a new one. So this is where marriage happens and integration. They're friends. Um, it's, it's, they have yet to put in the years. So integration, marriage. At a turning point, they start to differentiate. And so symbolically, let's say person A starts a business because they're all about fashion and they start a fashion company. They didn't have that fashion company or that real like path when they got married, but now they're becoming an individual and they're really going after their dreams. And then the other person that uh, is in the relationship, they're going after this other thing. And they are becoming separate things. This is where divorce happens. Um, it's when you lack the skill or we as a uh, society lack the skills to survive the differentiation, which is inevitable. We will all go through this. You can't fight it. Um, so we can just get better at getting through it. And it's not getting through it like you're gutting through it and you're just going to tough it out. It's like earning the skills so that this isn't so hard. Somebody that's unskilled at rowing a boat. Have you ever seen that or ever been in that position? It is freaking hard. I rented a kayak this last summer. And I was like, oh yeah, that looks easy. I'm going to, I like water. And I get in it and I uh, like, A, it was really, really hard. B, I don't have a core, I realized. And when I turned it back in and returned it, I was like, man, my shoulders are sore. I think they're going to fall off. And he's like, your shoulders are sore. Oh, you were doing that wrong. Your shoulders should never be sore. You need to be using this instead of this. Well, that's a skill I didn't have before. I rent another kayak. I practice because this is going to take practice. Practice. My shoulders weren't sore at all. So it's similar to that. We want to learn the skills and, so that we can enjoy this journey. But it's going to happen no matter what. Differentiation. So person A over here is getting into this. Person B over here is getting into this. They, uh, you might hear something in a movie that's like, well, we're just two different people now. I picked the wrong one. My expectation was you were supposed to come along with me and totally adopt my thing, but that is not the natural order of things. So, um, however, if they don't get divorced and they're lucky enough, they will get over here. And I'm using the term luck, but also my mentor, who's a triple PhD psychologist, uses the term luck because it is like sheer luck that they figure this out, they gutted it out, they did something, but it's a really low percentage of people that accomplish that. Just like winning the lottery is a low percentage. And then we get to de-differentiation. So person, um, they, person A and person B, they do their thing, they come back together, and now they're close. And um, 
instead of saying something really lame like de-differentiation, uh, you could use something like the deep we or a strengthened union. These people can finish each other's sentences. It's not quite dorky, but it's really like, I understand you, you understand me. Really, like we're not resentful about it. It's not a thing. It's we are in a union. And then it goes back to individuation. So it's a cycle, but it's not like you have to start all over again. It's a cycle as in uh, there's new challenges, you get older, something happens, and you individuate again, and you start finding new, deeper parts of yourself you didn't know or you're exploring, and then your partner and you learn about each other and become friends again in a new level, in a deeper level, and then you're going to differentiate. And with the skills, you become closer. So that's how couples that um, get get to be like married 50 years, um, they almost work like a hive mind because they've gone through this cycle so many times. It's a healthy cycle. It's a natural cycle that's all around the planet. And when things break down, it's going to be at this level. So... Um, I'm developing a course that would go through all of this, but I wanted to give you guys as much as I could before, and I want to see what your issues are. If you have any questions about this, um, it can obviously be private. You can just DM me. I am here. I am reading it, and I can answer your questions anonymously, so no worries there because I've noticed that a lot of people have some some walls up and some shame about not having a perfect marriage, which is so silly because that's not really a thing. Uh, if you're lucky, you might have been like one of the one or two percent that uh, made it to this area, but then to go through that cycle several more years over and over again, good luck without the skills. And I want to teach them to you. So um, the 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 issue with why I'm teaching this part first is because I want to go into each one of these separately so that you can get really deep skills on how to do it so you can actually practice it, get better at it, and have um, basically a, like a first-class marriage or a first-class um, relationship. Um, doesn't have to be a marriage, but just a long-term relationship is what I'm talking about. So um, I want to go really deep in integration. I'll be talking about trust. There is a science to trust. It's not just magic. Uh, it's not just super good intuition. It's a really interesting science. Um, this is where the rubber meets the road on why we didn't blow up in the Cold War. So I'm going to go over the science of trust, and that has to do with integration. And then I want to go over the science of conflict. This is differentiation, and when most people are looking for help or they're realizing stuff's not working out, they're probably right here, and there is a boatload of science on conflict and how to do it skillfully. Um, it usually means that all the misconceptions I had mentioned earlier can get answered for you, and other questions if you have something like... Um, my my spouse and I keep hitting this broken record of a re, of a of a conflict. Um, he won't freaking help me do the dishes. Well, there's a skillful way of getting through that, and I uh, I even have um, some really cool scenarios to work out that solve that that kind of booby trap broken record conflict. And you can have this kind of conflict with anybody where you just keep mm, hitting that wall with them. There is a skillful, really interesting way of getting through it, and it's not painful. So that's the science of conflict, science of trust, and then this is the science of connection. So deep, meaningful connections. Obviously, a lot of people like to point out how evil our tech is, like, he's just staring at the phone when I want to talk, or she's just looking at Facebook and I want to engage. And rather than make technology the, the super evil villain that um, society is trying to do. Oops, so sorry about that. Rather than look at tech as the fault, um, let's look towards science to make it better. So there is science on how to connect in a deeper way. 
And um, I want to go over that with you guys too, because it was really one of the pivotal things in my journey learning about it that helped improve my relationship with my son. Um, I helped my listening skills in a way that's off the charts. Like even when someone, and Russell wouldn't mind me sharing this, we always kind of uh, go back and forth on like, are you cool with this? Yes, I'm cool with this. So Russell cannot be the best um, um, at sharing his feelings in a, like the best vocabulary for sharing his feelings. But when I've gone through the science of connection, I've realized, oh, wait, are you trying to say this? Or is this closer to what you mean? And he'll be like, yes, thank you. Oh my gosh. I've been married to him for 14 years and I have not been able to do that before ever until I was learning this science. So my listening skills have gotten a lot better. My heart's gotten a lot more open to listening um, where it's not just like an us versus them kind of scenario. And that can be hard when you're hurt. Um, and there is a lot of cool, um, I don't know, not tactics because that seems like it cheapens it, but there is a really beautiful way of getting in touch with that and healing that part. So this is, this is like the high up 30,000 foot view of what I want to be talking about in the future with you guys. Trust, conflict, connection. You are an individual, so we don't need to go over that. Um, let me know if you have any questions on what I just talked about. Uh, you can, uh, like I said before, you can private message me, but I would really love to hear from you guys because if you don't really want to hear about this part and you really, really want to get into the nuts and bolts of conflict, I'm happy to do that. And then we can kind of skip around and I'll always um, reference back to this. But if there's something where you're kind of in a dire strait or something, I would love to help you uh, so you don't have to like wait but I need to hear from you. So let me know in the comments or DM me or email me. I, I'll leave my email in the um, comments and just let me know what you think. All right. And if there's somebody that you would like to have listened to this, just bring them into the Startup Entrepreneur group. All right. Uh, thank you and have a good afternoon.